Must have been would-be princesses. Or perhaps another prince. A bit of both. I suspect the same as you. <laughs> The, I mean, the hottest topic and guy right now on Disney Plus. Can't deny that. Can't deny that. <laughs> is Loki. And um, Loki the is Loki supposed to. The Loki series just confirmed yeah. that he is gender fluid and he is also bisexual. And that's so, a big deal. That's a big deal because. Um, would that um, help? Would that help unravel the gender pronoun in sex part? Of our um, discussion? The pronoun one, not so much, but sex and gender, yes. Okay. Gender fluid. Gender fluid is his gender. Okay, so can turn into man, woman, boy, girl, cat, dog. Alligator. Alligator, apparently. Alligator. Apparently alligator. Uh, End credit scene, Loki. End credit scene. <laughs> Sorry, spoilers. Um, <laughs> um, and then bisexuality in episode three, Lamentis, mm -hmm. which is basically... Um, his sexuality yeah so okay he's bisexual so big deal big deal big deal right um first of all it's a disney product even though this is marvel mm -hmm. that we're talking about um, it's still headed by disney it's still headed by disney so you know i honestly thought that the first signs of like at least lesbians would be mm -hmm. girl meets world i was really hoping the finale would have the best friend and the in court anyway never mind what sabrina carpenter oh sabrina and, Car uh, riley and, maya? and ryan riley I and maya i thought riley and maya would end up being together oh i did yeah. too <laughs> by the way girl girl meets world is the sequel to boy meets world that uh was in the disney channel mm -hmm. and i had i hedged my bets that the the two best friends because now it's essentially it's a girl now mm -hmm. uh cory and topanga were raising a girl uh, that I would hedge my bets at the finale, it would be Riley and Maya together. Mm. Good show. I don't know about the ending, uh, but I thought the ending where they didn't yeah. move was kind of stupid because like that's yeah, a little, great that's opportunity. A little, that's a little but anyway, but Loki. Anyways, well, anyway, Loki. Going back to Disney, this um, is like the at least the first really big signs mm -hmm. i didn't say i'm not saying this is the first sign because we talked about Val, valkyrie is, an, is another um confirmed as bisexual concern as con, con, concern confirmed as bi, bisexual but this is really working towards like gender fluidity um and again it it happened in passing mm -hmm. so to your point do you think just awareness that these characters exist is important or do we need to do in do we need to do more um what i feel is that yes it's confirmed that they're bisexual or whatever they're part of the lgbtqi mm -hmm. plus community but i don't want them to make it the focal point of the story because that's not really how it is in life it's like oh yeah you're part of that community but it's not like a focal point of your life um kind of thing yeah and then so it shouldn't and, and be is the story a, yeah. is centered around it and this is a, and so you're saying that we can have you know just casual in passing i mean mm -hmm. it's not it's not all rom-coms right it's like, not it's all well don't get me wrong i love the stories where it's focused around the person accepting who they are and hoping that the people around them are like I love those stories too, but not it all. Not all of should them be, they should be. Like um, one of the other ones was in the Heights. Mm -hmm. um, it showed in the very intro. It was two um, LGBTQI play, um, P plus people mm -hmm. were in a domestic lifestyle kind yeah. of thing, which is rare because that community it's um, mm -hmm. often very sexualized because they're it's talking well, about sexuality. sexualized in mm -hmm. religious. Which is religious. a two expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, you know, we're talking about, you know, two things that like, you know, Latino communities have mm -hmm. is like the, you know, it's how hot and sizzle they are, but also mm -hmm. the, the religious side of things. Mm -hmm. So it's like two polar opposites and they managed to actually put those two characters in passing. And we were talking, we're talking about mm -hmm. who are the characters again? Um, I can't remember their names, but one of them is played by- The one um, who owns the salon, right? One who owns the salon and then the one, um, the Stephanie other one, Beatriz's and then, character. And the other one's the hairdresser. 
one of the hairdressers. Okay. Yeah, right. I believe that those were the two people who were shown in a domestic lifestyle because they were shown like just waking up in bed, like you know, yeah. a norm, um, not a normal couple, but a regular couple would do. Like, it's not anything super sexual or anything that yeah. was like. So I think I think it's, kind of it's more important to just like, hey, if we know these characters are, mm -hmm. you know, part of the community. You know we could just like we can either do something about that story to gain more exposure or just do it in passing therefore either them either either one of them will gain more ex ex exposure right it's, yeah. like, it's like it's not we want to um we want to see um lgbtqia plus people in um in media but it doesn't have to be centered around that we don't want all that representation just to be coming out movies or acceptance movies we yeah. want to see it in superheroes in um dystopian games like the last of us ellie yeah. we want to see it in um domestic lifestyles like in the heights we want to see it in all types of genres yeah, yeah but not necessarily try to write a character because of the story correct I mean, write a lesbian character or write a queer character just to appease the community, correct? Um, we shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing it just to appease the community, especially if mm -hmm. the corporation is um, yeah, not know. very supportive of I know. the community. It, it, it would be weird to... It would be weird to for a Chick Fil A produced film to have a yeah, LGBTQ, like, and I'm doing the extremes by the way. Yeah, like if Popeye's you if, chicken sandwich still the best. Yeah, it's okay. still better. Um, <laughs> still better. Friends don't le let friends don't let friends eat Chick Fil A. Okay. Um, friends don't eat <laughs> but basically, you don't want a corporation that's anti LGBTQ to market it towards LGBTQ because mm -hmm. we're not like some community that you can just make profit out yeah, of we're not I just see. a thing an item so you can get money and then not support us gotcha for the rest. gotcha so okay let's say let's say some examples so loki big mm -hmm. deal gender fluid really not you know well i'll reserve judgment in that because we're we, we still got two episodes left mm -hmm. i do wanted sylvie and loki to get to have that kiss i'm i'm thinking Ravona because it's yourself Thank you, Miss Ravona Renslayer. Thank you for disintegrating him. That I'm is, sorry. That is something for another podcast. That's disgusting. <laughs> that, something... that you're gonna make out with yourself. I wouldn't mind making up with myself. A female version of yourself. Uh... No, that's a male version of yourself. I don't know. <laughs> I never thought about it that deep. But anyway, I'm I'm good. Male, female. I'm. I'm I, I was thinking no. more of like Gaston. Like, oh no! <laughs> thinking like, you know, like um, <laughs> like making yeah. Out yourself, making out with yourself is one of the lokiest things to ever be Loki. True. True. <laughs> but again, for another podcast. Um, um another one, Koranasami. Korami. Like, um, I think that's. I can't remember their ship name it's right Korami. now. Korami. It's Korami. Korami. It can't be Asara. Asara. That's weird. Korami. I know it's Korasami. 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 Okay, Korasami it is then. Um, love them. Um, <sighs> I'm. I have I have certain disappointments regarding mm -hmm. the finale. Nickelodeon, you should have pulled the trigger. You should have pulled the trigger and you just let them kiss when the they went into the spirit portal. You but really, you guys, you guys you, really have to do that. Like you guys, I mean, you could have been fir first before Disney. I know. Yeah, right. Like you could, you showed them holding hands, but there was a deleted scene with the kiss, and I needed that. But I saw the deleted scene, so it's like it's stored in my heart. So yes, <laughs> at least they had it in the comics, but still kind of disappointed. So, uh -huh. both of them are bisexual. I believe they were confirmed to with, be both bisexual. With the same boy? Um. Think about it. Yeah, they did. Well, Mako's a douche, so. Um, Mako I, is a douche. I know. Like, playing with those girls' feelings. No. Um, so, let's Should just. Should have went with Bolin. Bolin's <laughs> yeah, loyal. Bolin's, Bolin's <laughs> the loyal one. Bolin deserves better. 
<laughs> Should have went with Nuck Tuck. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit I'm I'm super disappointed with the uh, with the ending. I mean, it was, I guess it was a big deal at that time. It was a big deal at you that know? time. At but... that time, because I remember during the finale. Um, How old was I during that finale? You were young. I was very young. young. Okay. Very young. Um, but um, I guess because it's still like back then, and and mind you, that's like. What were we talking about? I Maybe... think it was like 2014, 2015. So, so seven, eight years ago, the, that finale happened. I think we were more along the lines of, um, I think, um, you know, like same sex couples were mm-hmm. slowly Being appearing in on more mainstream. mainstream TV. It was yeah. like it was like one step after the other. Until and again, going back to that whole society talk, mm-hmm. you know, you just gotta educate and you expose. You have to keep on pushing keep and on pushing. pushing, pushing, pushing. Um, you know? another. Oops, I hit the microphone. Another one. Um, you're more an expert on this one because you watch the Harley Quinn TV series, mm-hmm. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I just love them together. <laughs> That's just it. They were. They were. I mean, I think even in the comics, they they I, I they became they were, a couple. I think but, they're a couple in the comics. You know, like Harley Quinn, the most violent comedic TV show on. It's on, a chaotic TV uh, it's show. It's a chaotic TV show. I mean, come on, Batman can't have sex there. But, <laughs> but um, I just love because it, it 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 was always between Harley and Ivy. The they're just best friends, and didn't realize that Harley. You know, she she's a cuckoo in inside that head. Actually, really had feelings for Poison Ivy and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they were already they until just a, that one fate, fateful scene in the pit where they came out and they just kissed and I was like leaping in joy. It's like yes, <laughs> they're cute together. They're cute. They're cute they're together. Cute together. They're cute. Together. I can't wait for the third season to come out. Uh, I think that's that's a perfect. You know, despite the crime, despite the chaos, despite mm-hmm. the madness of being the two of them being psychos, um, the 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 way this their story has been constructed, both in the comic books and the TV show, um, has it was always well executed. it was well executed because like they've always just been like, you know, like if this were like a regular straight show, it would be like Poison Ivy will be would be Harley would be the jock. And Poison mm-hmm. Ivy would be the girl next door mm. type of thing. And that just like, at least on the on the, on the the show, that just like started like just seeping in and seeping in and seeping in. And then the girl next door was going to get married. It didn't seem forced. It didn't seem forced. And I think that's what everything in terms of like inclusivity should um, attain mm-hmm. in, term, in time of story. You don't force it in. Make it organic as possible because that's what relationships are. Yeah, they are organic. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's that's just a that was just a perfect uh, that was just a perfect story for me. <sighs> Despite the mad, all I mean, and then you put it with the madness and the chaos, <laughs> and that's just uh, anyway. Um, hmm. Okay, so we talked about Loki, Valkyrie, Korami, a little bit of Ellie. Korasami. Korasami in Korasami. <laughs> Ellie uh, in The Last of Us. That one's actually pretty beautiful. That was also a beautiful story. Though. That one wasn't forced at all. Hmm? Ellie? Ellie. Ellie in The Last yeah. of Us, yeah. Um, first of all, during the game, the first game, we had no idea what, you know, you know, what, you know, what she identifies as until like that. Um, left behind. Beautiful DLC. Left behind. That one made yeah. me cry. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, then we got to see her life before mm-hmm. the whole fireflies having to go get and a then, cure. And then part two rolled around, and now she has a girlfriend. Dina. Dina, saving Dina. Dina becoming, you know, raising a kid together. Until um, she had to go back for Abby, and then ugh, everything fell apart. <laughs> Well, that's. I I still find that a beautiful game. I know it's a beautiful like, game. I don't, but... I don't I don't get why everybody's like 
on the fans. Like, I think they're just. I think they're upset that Joel died so early. But that's a better driving point. Yeah, it's you, better driving point. Your father point figure than died. Yeah. Well, I You're know. angry. And I think that's a lesson also to people in the. Um, I guess I mean that was a shock. I I I I did like that shock. I mm-hmm. every, it could go fifty fifty, but they did fake you out that like the Dina was the one who passed away in the yeah. trailers, and I think that's what really rattled the rest of the gaming nerds. Mm. <laughs> um. um <laughs> why are you laughing? Why? Are you... Hey, that's that's a that's how Conan. I, I, every time I think of nerds, and I know I'm a nerd, I know I'm a geek, <laughs> but that's what that's what Conan O'Brien sees like nerds. Yeah, <laughs> the glasses going up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Continue. You don't like the Last of Us ending? <laughs> I'll tell you plenty of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Continue. Continue. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it, it goes back to, um, by the way, like all of these, um, I was watching this uh, in, uh, I'll put I'll put the links in the description, but there was this video, because uh, G4 is back, yay, I love G4, <laughs> but they were talking about inclusivity and Adam Sessler was interviewing um, uh, pretty much somebody, uh, I, I, I can't forget her, I, I keep on forgetting her name, she's a, bi- she's a really famous streamer, but... They were talking about like um, her really ide- trying to figure out her identity through video games. I remember you were mm-hmm. watching. I caught a clip where she was. Uh, or was it you describing it to me, or mm-hmm. it was a clip? But basically, she was saying in that interview that she would be a boy so just so she could yeah have a there, female, there was there was uh, a, a there was a whole example woman. where like so she you know it's you know like world of warcraft or all of these mmo rpgs um you know you either at, at the very beginning there was no such thing as like gender identity you either dress up like either like as a female elf or a male elf or a male knight or a female knight and then therefore you go through this whole story where like if you want to have um, you know, if you're a female, you're tied down to like a male counterpart. If you want to have a romantic relationship, or but then he see then 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 she saw a lot of like her male uh, counterparts like getting girlfriend, and she said, "Hey, I want a girlfriend too." So she ended up dressing up, uh, changing her avatar into a male character just to, and therefore simulated her life identifying herself as i guess a bisexual or i'm not quite sure i and, and i don't want to i don't want to dictate her but she identified either as a bisexual or a lesbian mm-hmm. uh through that and then they they went on a deep dive kind of like what we're doing in terms of like uh, a deep dive on like what mainstream media like Korasami mm-hmm. and Ellie and Loki being gender fluid but more on the video games and the, the, did you know that there is I and I didn't just dis- I didn't even know about this did you know that there is a thing called a coming out simulator where it's a game yeah. I guess on your phone where you are I don't know if it's your phone or a PC game or something but there there it's basically you're texting your mom or dad in your action and you're simulating like what would they say if you were to come out to them huh. and it just helped and i guess that was built so you could actually not necessarily to expect what to expect but at least it would simulate for you that it might be easy or might be hard to come out and that's actually that's that's actually a remarkable uh, way of doing things. That's just that's that's just smart the way, because you know a lot of people only can do it once. And with this simulator, mm-hmm. you can at least simulate doing it multiple times. So then you at least have an idea of what to. Yeah, and it's do. based and it's based on conversations of I believe the developer that they had that he had in I guess he or she interviewed a couple more people. Uh, so these are all like organic conversations that are happening, and he just plugged it in into that simulator. Um, 
Yeah, and then there's and then there's a lot. Like there 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 are just some games that are uh very casual, kind of like uh I I think they they describe Borderlands as one that like there are just like characters there that are gender fluid. Um there are some characters kind of like um like Last of Us where you know it's not necessarily part of the first game but it's like you know eventually it just pretty much just organically rolled into part to the DLC and part two mm-hmm. and again going back to the whole mm-hmm. um, being part of the community doesn't have to be the focal point of the story I love that in Last of Us yes you knew that um, Ellie was lesbian, but it wasn't her main part of the story. It was there, but it wasn't there where it w- was like, oh yeah, we have to bring that up every yep. five minutes. That mm-hmm. oh yeah, she's a lesbian. Oh she's no, these are just um, relationships. Yeah, these are relationships. It's a normal thing. Yeah. If you're enjoying this video, hit that like button. It helps a ton in this channel. Comment below here at Hungry Nerdy Fam because we love chatting with you. And subscribe because you should. And I mean it. You really should. And be sure to check out our podcast, The Fodder Daughter Nerdcast, for the full episode. Links in the description below. Thanks for watching.